Okay, this video is on normal distributions and percentages. Now, we've already talked a good bit about normal distributions, and uh, in this video, we're going to talk about something called the empirical rule, and the empirical rule is also sometimes called the 68, 95, 99 rule. And the empirical rule just says that in any large data set that is normally distributed, then approximately 68.3% of all of the data values will be within one standard deviation of the mean. And 95.5% approximately of all of the values will be within two standard deviations of the mean, and approximately 99.7% of all the data values will be within three standard deviations of the mean. So let's take a look at what this means uh, as far as the, the graph of our normal curve is concerned. Here I've got a graph of some data set, and the mean I know is right here in the middle. That point right there represents the mean of my data set. And now according to the empirical rule, 68.3% of all of the values will be within one standard deviation of the mean. So if these two lines here represent a point that is one standard deviation, this point right here represents one standard deviation above the mean, and this point right here represents one standard deviation below the mean, then according to the empirical rule, 68.3% of all of the values in my data set will lie between these two numbers. So this area in here represents 68.3% of my data points within one standard deviation of the mean. So you can see that within one standard deviation of the mean just means one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, all of the data points that lie between those two values. So 95.5% of the values will be within two standard deviations of the mean. Let me use a different color here. So if this is two standard deviations above the mean, and this is two standard deviations below the mean, then this area here is going to contain 95.5% of all of my data values. They will lie between two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below the mean. And 99.7% of all of my data points will lie between three standard deviations above and three standard deviations below the mean. So all of these values here would represent 99.7%. So you can see that, according to the empirical rule, almost all of my data values, if I've got a normally distributed data set, almost all of them are going to be within three standard deviations of the, of the mean. I've still got a few that are going to lie out here at the kind of tail end, each end of the graph, but almost all of my data points are going to be within three standard deviations of the mean. So let's take a look at an example here. Example number one says, a group of students weigh 500 U.S. pennies. They find that the pennies have normally distributed weights with a mean of 3.1 grams and a standard deviation of 0.14 grams. Sketch the normal curve for this distribution and label the mean and standard deviation. Actually, I think it says, yeah, label the mean and three standard deviations above and below the mean. So here I have a sketch of a normal curve. And I know that my mean value, according to my problem, is 3.1 grams. So here's a point right here at the mean, that's 3.1 grams. And I want to label three standard deviations above and three standard deviations below the mean. So let's see. Let's sketch in. There's one standard deviation above and below. 
two standard deviations above and below, and three standard deviations above and below. So let's see. If my mean is 3.1 grams and one standard deviation is 0.14 grams, then that means this distance here is 0.14 grams, which means this point right here is 0.14 grams above 3.1, which makes this 3.24. And this point right here, that distance there is also 0.14 grams. So 3.1 minus 0.14 is going to be 2.96 grams. So that's the value of that point. And I can label all the rest of my points here as well. Two standard deviations above the mean, so that means another 0.14 grams. So that's going to be 3.38. And another one above, let's see, 3.38 plus another 0.14 is going to be 3.52. And let's see, 0.14 grams down, so subtract 0.14, and that's going to give me 2.82 grams. And subtract another 0.14, and that's going to bring me down to 2.68 grams. Okay. Part B. What percent of the pennies will have a weight that lies between 2.96 grams and 3.24 grams? Well, I can see that 2.96 grams and 3.24 grams that's just one standard deviation above and below the mean. So this question is asking me what percent of the pennies lie within one standard deviation of the mean. Well, I already know that because according to my empirical rule, that's going to be 68.3%. What percent lie between 2.82 grams and 3.38 grams? Well, 2.82 and 3.38 represents two standard deviations two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below the mean. So again, according to my empirical rule, this is going to be 95.5%. And what percent of pennies lie between 2.68 grams and 3.52 grams? Well, I can see that 2.68 and 3.52 represents three standard deviations above and below the mean, which means 99.7% of all my pennies lie between those two values. Now, take a look at part C. Part C says, how many pennies have a weight that lies within 2.96 and 3.24? Now, at first glance, it looks like this is exactly the same question as here, but it's slightly different. Notice in part B, I'm asking what percentage of the pennies lie between these two values. And in part C, I'm asking how many? What's the number of pennies? Well, if I know that 68.3% of pennies lie between these two values, and if I know that I have 500 pennies, well then the number of pennies that lie between these two values must be 68.3% of 500, which is 0.683 times 500, which is approximately 342 pennies. How many lie between 2.82 and 3.38? Well, 2.82 and 3.38, that's within two standard deviations. That means 95.5% of all of my pennies, which is 500, and that is approximately 478 pennies. How many lie between 2.68 and 3.52? That's going to be 99.7% of all my pennies. 99.7% of 500 is approximately 499. So you can see that within three standard deviations of the mean, I have almost all of my 500 pennies. Now, I can imagine that hopefully some of you are wondering, well, that's fine if you know all you ever care about is the percentage of your data points that lie you know, within some number of standard deviations. Well, but what if you wanted to know, say, how many pennies lie between 
you know, this point and this point, or between here and here. How are you going to figure that out? Well, that's a problem that you can't solve just using the empirical rule. And in fact, we're going to use a calculator function, a calculator function on our TI-83 and TI-84 calculators that's called normal CDF. The normal CDF function will tell you the percentage of values that lie within a given interval. So this calculator function will tell us the percentage of values that lie within a given interval, and all that we are going to have to tell it is the given interval the mean of our data set and the standard deviation of our data set. And the way we enter these values using the normal CDF function is normal CDF, and by the way, the normal CDF function is on your calculator. It's under the list. list. Yeah, you have to say, no, not list, distribution. Second, and then the distribution uh, function, which is above the VARS key. And then the second one down is called normal CDF. So you bring up that function, and then you have to enter four values. And those four values you enter in this order. The lower bound, the lower bound of your interval, the upper bound of your interval, the lower bound and the upper bound, that determines the interval that you're interested in. Lower bound, upper bound, then the mean, and then the standard deviation. So for this question here, what percent of pennies weigh between 3 grams and 3.2 grams? We would enter, we bring up the normal CDF function, we'd enter the lower bound, which is 3. We'd enter the upper bound, which is 3.2. We'd enter the mean of our data set, and the mean of our data set is 3.1 grams. That was given to us. And then we'd enter the standard deviation of our data set, which is 0.14. And then you hit the Enter key, and your calculator will give you a percentage value and tell you what percentage of all of the pennies lie between these two values. So if you have a TI-84, I encourage you to try that out, and we will take a look at this and some other examples tomorrow in class.